Numerical Computation, Chapter 8, Video 2. We now look at a more general situation. Say, for example, um, we were fitting three functions in a linear way. So given a data set, x, k, y, k, with m plus 1 points, we now want to find a function, let's call it y as a function of x, consisting of a linear combination of three functions, f, g, and h. So each of these functions multiplied by a coefficient, so a times f, b times g, and c times h, and we add them up. So we want to find a function such that it best fits the data. So in the end, we know this means we need to find the best choice of the coefficients a, b, and c, so the y function becomes best. So the function f, g, and h, they are already given. They could be polynomials, it could be exponential functions, natural log or cosine, any of these, as long as um, they are linearly independent of each other. And now we define the error function, the psi, which depends on the coefficients a, b, and c, in the same way, so that is, um, the arrow is the arrow at every point, so y at xk minus yk squared, so this arrow squared, and we sum them all over all of the points. Okay. So write out in detail because we have the y here. y will be af, evaluate xk, plus bg at xk, plus ch at xk, minus yk squared. So we know at the minimum the partial derivative with respect to a, b, and c shall all be zero. And that will allow us to write three equations. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Partial psi partial a equal to zero. So we have to differentiate this expression in a. Think a is my independent variable and everything else is a constant. So the chain rule says I will get two times that whole thing here, multiply by this whole expression in the bracket, differentiate it with respect to a, thinking everything else is a constant. Okay, so if all of these are constant, differentiated in a gives you zero. The only term that contributes to the end result will be the term with a, and then what you will have will exactly the coefficient in front of a, which is f of xk. Now, once we have understood this, and the partial derivative in B is carried out in totally similar way. So we differentiate term by term of this. The chain rule says it's two times whatever's in the bracket, multiply by the thing in the bracket, differentiate in B, and which we know we'll get just the coefficient here in front of B, which is gxk. Okay, and the differentiation with respect to c is also the same. This is the chain rule part, and then we have to multiply here is what's in front of c, which is h. So again, we can um, rewrite those three equations, um, treating a, b, and c as our main unknown, and write everything else as coefficients in front of these a, b, and c. Okay. So this term comes from summation over f x k squared times a, and since a has nothing to do with the k, we can take it out, and we can sum all this up. This becomes a number, and that multiplies by a. And all the other terms are obtained in the same way. So pulling b out in this summation, you can sum first and multiply by b, and same here, sum first and multiply by c. And then the term that does not contain a, b, or c, we move it to the right-hand side. And that becomes kind of the, the source term. Okay, And then you can go through all three equations, and this will be the system you have at the end. And you see, once the data set is given, x, k, and y, k is unknown, then what's in front of a, b, and c, this sum here in the end just becomes a number for each. Okay, so this will be just a number, this will be a number, this will be a number. So we get a 3 by 3 system of linear equations for three unknowns. These equations are called the normal equations. 
And taking a look at this 3x3 three three, um, system, and we see that the term here is the same as the term here, and the term here is the same as the term here, and the term here is the same as the term here. So if you write it as a matrix vector form, like a matrix A times um, your unknown vector x equal to a right-hand side B, you see that your A matrix is symmetric. And that also um, gives us some computational advantage. That is, you don't have to compute nine um, sum, for example, here. Here, you just need to compute the upper triangle of your matrix A, and you know it's symmetric. Okay, hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.